Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Olympia, Hollywood superstar, former governor of California, really a man who needs no introduction. He terminated countless, defeated the predator and generally comes off as Mr. Invincible. But what was his health really been like in person, away from the stage and the screen? What surgeries has he had? Did his well-documented steroid use have any impact on his health? And how long is he likely to live? Hi, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Dr. Aziz. I'm a physician based in the UK. Those already subscribed to this channel will know that these are original content videos here. I couldn't find anything put together regarding Arnold's history of health issues, so I decided to put a video together myself after quite a few hours of research. We'll be going through all his major surgeries, why he had them, what his health is like today in his 70s, and how he has adapted his diet and training with time. Now, before we get started, these videos take a lot of time, research, and editing to put together, so it would be very much appreciated if you could like the video, hit the subscribe and notifications button, and if you could even comment below for the algorithm, that would be amazing. Now, the first documented significant health problem that required surgery was when Arnold apparently injured his knee falling through a podium whilst posing in 1973. You can see some brief information and picture here, although there isn't too much detail about this that I could find elsewhere. Now, Arnold had and continues to have significant cardiac issues. It is claimed that he was born with a faulty aortic valve which needed major surgery in 1997. I know it's becoming a bit of a running joke, celebrities who have used illegal substance claiming to have genetic issues, but in an interview with Graham Bassinger, Arnold does actually give a pretty convincing story of the family history. First of all, when you talk about the heart operation, my mother had a heart problem. And so I took her to UCLA one day, this was in the late 70s, where they told her that she has a valve problem. As a matter of fact, two of her valves didn't really work well. Now just to give a brief outline of what valves are and what they do, valves basically ensure that blood flows in the right direction. Keeping it simple, the heart valves are crucial for the functioning of the heart. If a faulty valve is not repaired or replaced, death will inevitably follow. So let's carry on with Arnold's family history. That she made down the line need a, a valve replacement. And they also told her, they asked her, I said, did your mother or someone in your family have that? And uh, she said, which was the first time I kind of heard that was, yeah, my mother had a valve problem and she died with the age of 67. Now I'm finding this part about his grandmother being diagnosed with a heart valve issue a little bit more difficult to believe. Bear in mind his own mother was born in 1922, his grandmother was likely born in the 1800s and echocardiogram, the gold standard to diagnose heart valve issues, only became mainstream in the 1970s. So the timeline doesn't quite fit here. They said, they said well, you know, it's obviously something that is being passed down. I said, Arnold, you better get your heart checked regularly because this could also happen to you. And so from that point on, every year, I had my heart checked when I had my physical. Now, this is something really wise, what Arnold did and clearly continues to do. He kept a close eye on his health. I don't believe the Ultimate Warrior, Randy Savage or even Triple H monitored their own health and bodies as they could or should have done. Arnold loved bodybuilding than any of these guys, but also different to all of them, he listened to the doctors and adapted and that is a big reason as to why he is still alive and going pretty strong today despite being in his 70s and despite all his surgeries. So Arnold then goes on to describe how he was regularly monitored, but then in the 90s the doctor told him, I remember the doctor that physical said, you know, the time is coming up where I see your heart, the performance going down, that you need soon a valve replacement. Although not mentioned in this video from other sources, it is mentioned that Arnold had a bicuspid aortic valve, meaning it had two leaflets instead of the normal three, tricuspid, and that he had associated aortic stenosis or narrowing of this valve. So Arnold then went on to have elective or planned surgery. After the Batman and Robin movie, I went into the hospital and uh, got uh, the, the valve replacement, got both valves replaced, the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve. Now this is basically what is known as a ROS procedure, where the pulmonary valve is taken and moved to replace the faulty aortic valve. Secondly, a replacement pulmonary valve is obtained from a cadaver or animal and put in place of the now missing pulmonary valve in Arnold's heart. Now the first surgery didn't work out exactly as planned, with fluid coming into Arnold's lungs soon after the surgery, so they had to go in again, but the second operation was successful and he was stable again for another 20 years or so. Interestingly, the other option Arnold had at the time was to have a mechanical valve fitted. This would have been a lifelong option, but with the downsides that 
he would need lifelong blood thinners and his capacity to exercise would have been significantly reduced. So he opted against this option, although knowing that the pulmonary valve from the cadaver he received would at some point need replacing. In 2001, Arnold reportedly broke several of his ribs, having fallen off his motorbike. The treatment for most broken ribs is simply rest and let the body heal itself, which typically takes six weeks. So what was the next surgery he had? In 2002, Arnold had hip replacement surgery. The most common need for hip replacement is osteoarthritis. Arthritis, which is so bad that is not managed by medications, physiotherapy or steroid injections. He was only 55 at the time, a relatively young age to get a joint replacement, but it's also not uncommon to see in bodybuilders and wrestlers. Hulk Hogan had both his hips and both his knees replaced by the time he was 60. Next, in 2003, Arnold underwent surgery for a torn rotator cuff muscle whilst performing a motorcycle stunt in Terminator 3. Initially, he just wore a sling, but later he had surgery, something normally required if there is only a full tear of the muscle. In 2006, Arnold broke his femur, or the thigh bone, in a skiing accident which required surgery, and in 2008, he required arthroscopic knee surgery following a workout injury, although no specific details were given. In 2012, Arnold then underwent further shoulder surgery, something he only just referred to as tune-up of his shoulder, without providing any further details. After all the action stunts and physical abuse, shooting the Expendables 2 and The Last Stand, it was time for a little tune-up on my surgery. Look who was coincidentally waiting in the line behind me for his shoulder surgery, referring to Stallone. Now a tune-up is quite vague and not a medical term. If I had to guess, the surgery could have been one of two things. Number one, treatment for another rotator cuff injury. Or number two, surgical treatment for arthritis. In 2012, Arnold would have been 65, an age by which many people have arthritis, let alone someone like Arnold who had been pounding heavyweights for many decades. Although a tune-up doesn't sound like shoulder replacement, in arthritis you can have often bony spurs or osteophytes or even bone fragments floating about and causing issues, and this surgery was about. Now remember we mentioned that the pulmonary valve that Arnold had from birth was used to replace his faulty aortic valve, and then he was then inserted with a pulmonary valve from a cadaver or animal. Well, come 2018 and this pulmonary valve needed replacing again. Although a minimally invasive procedure was attempted, it was unsuccessful and they had to resort to a traditional open heart surgery. The surgery was successful, but the recovery was painful and intense. With yet another Terminator moving on the horizon, Arnold had to work pretty hard. He mentioned, after I underwent open heart surgery this spring, I had to use a walker. I had to do breathing exercises five times a day to retrain my lungs. I was frustrated and angry and in my worst moments I couldn't see the way back to my old self. But typically in Arnold fashion, he worked hard and got back to his old self and made it for the Terminator movie. Finally, in 2020, Arnold also had his aortic valve replaced again. Although no further details were given of the exact procedure, I suspect it was not open heart surgery this time given that he was up and about cycling around town soon after the surgery. So I guess the three big questions that are unanswered are, did steroids cause any of his issues, particularly his art issues. Number two, did his heavy training cause any of his joint injuries? Number three, how long is he likely to live? With regards to the steroids issue, it's difficult to say. We only have information that Arnold and his PR team have chosen to release. With other celebrities, we've had actual autopsy reports which demonstrated enlarged hearts as a consequence of steroid and growth hormone abuse. The initial heart issue, bicuspid aortic valve as opposed to tricuspid, is certainly not caused by steroids. He could have been born with this. The subsequent cardiac surgeries have all been as a consequence of this initial issue. So again, not directly associated with steroids. So although yes, steroids may have contributed to other heart issues that are possibly not being mentioned, the actual documented heart surgeries were not because of steroids. With regards to heavy training, although the evidence is debatable as to whether these cause arthritis and joint issues, certainly some of the injuries were as a direct result of his training. And I would go as far as to say his heavy training caused or accelerated his arthritis, which have needed, for example, the hip replacement at the age of only 55. And finally, how long will he live? Or perhaps more crucially, how long before his heart gives out? I think Arnold is very, very smart. He's obviously very closely monitored and he also heeds the advice of the doctors, two things that make huge difference. It's difficult to say for sure how long he will live. His current valves will again need re replacing in 10 to 15 years time. Will he be fit enough for surgery at that point? Maybe there will be new technology by then. Will his steroid use and smoking catch up to him to cause an irreversible disease? I think he'll get to his 80s, likely mid 80s, before one thing or another catches up to him for which there may not be any viable medical intervention. But hey, I could be wrong. This is a guy who always comes back. Back, right? As a final point of discussion, what changes has Arnold made to his diet and training these days? Arnold is certainly a lot more careful with his diet these days, claiming to be 80% vegan, with his cholesterol levels dropping to an all-time low. Arnold has also mentioned in several of his interviews how he is no longer able to do heavy free weight training, but tries to use machines instead. So that's basically a summary of Arnold's injuries, medical issues and surgeries. Now I mentioned rotator cuff muscles and the shoulder is certainly the most injured joint in the body. You may find my analysis of Jeff Cavalier's shoulder MRI 
eye and injury an interesting watch and some of the basic mistakes he makes in his video. Anyway, I hope you learned something useful and enjoy this summary. If you want to keep learning about psychology, medicine or life hacks, hit the like, subscribe and notifications button. Any suggestions or comments, feel free to post below. Until next time, stay safe.